<laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome. It is just a an honor and a pleasure to be here with Dr. Jacob Teitelbaum. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, those who don't know me, uh, I had CFS fibromyalgia post viral back in 1975. It knocked me out of medical school and left me homeless, sleeping in parks. And that was my avenue for learning how to recover. So I spent about 50 years with my focus being effective treatment for these processes, including the MCIS component. So I'd like to contextualize MCS for you today. I'm not going to go through all the here's how you treat that because everybody else is going to do that. But I want to say, here, if you hear some of the other symptoms and problems, the CFS, the fibromyalgia, the POTS, uh, the pain, all these other things that are part and parcel of the MCAS and teach you how to make those go away so you can get a life you love. So welcome, everybody. Amen. And I just want to give a brief introduction. You need almost no introduction, um, but I would like to give some introduction for people who might be new to your work. And if you're popping on with us, if you could just say hi in the comments. I want to make sure our comments are working, but that's also how we can see who's on with us. Um, we just see a number, but to see your name, we'd love to see your name so that we know who we're holding in the space and, and interacting with. So just say hi and where you're from. Hey, Taylor. Thank you for, for kicking that off. And so um, I was first introduced to your work when the first edition of From Fatigue to Fantastic was published. And I don't know what year that was because I'm terrible with years. 95. <laughs> okay. So it wasn't 95, but it was a couple of years after that. And um, I was really, really ill. I didn't know anyone else who was sick like I was. And I was in a period of my life where to walk up the stairs to my bedroom, I had to sit at the top of the steps and rest. And I hated taking a shower because if I washed off, I couldn't dry. And I had to get a huge terry cloth robe to wrap myself in and lie on the floor until I had the energy to towel off and I turn on a heater so it dry me, but I couldn't wash my hair. I couldn't dry, I mean, I couldn't dry my hair. So I had to tie my hair to where I couldn't get, wouldn't get too cold. It was so complex. I couldn't hold my arms up. And I know you had really severe chronic fatigue and your book that from fatigue to fantastic legitimized what all of us with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia were dealing with. And I had such severe fibromyalgia pain. And so many of us were told over and over again, this is mm -hmm. psychosomatic. This is all in your head. You want to be sick. And you said, no, there's a biochemical, emotional, spiritual, everything basis for this. And it's curable and treatable. And while therapy or psychiatry may be, an important adjunct, that is not the only answer. That's not the full answer. And that changed my life. And that was the first functional medicine book I read. Um, I want to just turn it over to you because I, I just want people to know the context of how you changed the face of fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue from being this psychiatric psychological disorder to what we're all dealing with. And you just gave us legitimacy that we weren't crazy mm -hmm. and that means so much and i know you tell more of that story in the summit i just want to encourage all of you to listen if you only listen to one talk please listen to dr Teitelbaum's talk because it it transformed my life just in the last few months um when you talked about surrender <laughs> so where would you like to start well you brought up, is this real? And in, it's devastating to have this very complex illness that you can't predict. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going to do. And then you go to abusive assholes, I'm sorry, doctors, who say, I don't know what's wrong with you, so you're crazy, and apply that to your family. And at this point... Well, your family I, hears it, right? And, yeah. then, and then they believe it, and then they, they start to buy into it, that. too. Yeah. And I recommend, if you find an abusive doctor like that, 
what you do is you stand up if you can. You walk over to them, kiss them on the top of the head, look them in the eye and say, thank you for letting me know right away what a complete and utter asshole you are so I don't waste my time as an abusive son of a bitch like you. Turn around, take your family out the door, slam in the waiting room. Please call the police. This is an abusive bastard. He deserves to lose his license because he does or she. Walk out the door, slam it. Recommend before that to everybody in the waiting room, please run like hell. This man is dangerous and slam the door because he is. It is grossly inappropriate to say, I don't know what's wrong with you, so you're crazy. That is abusive. And I, I remember in med school, they used to call me the phantom because two to four in the mornings, I was a night owl. I would be in the medical mm -hmm. library and I'm a science geek. And I'd be going through the research uh, journal stacks. And I used to like to take a journal from 100 years ago, 50, 20, and, you know, and my jamma was out then so I could do that and see just how things have changed. I was, I was getting perspective. And I remember I pulled a journal, an old journal out and a study was written by the person my neurology textbook was named after. And they were using metal plates in what is called hysterical paralysis. Yeah. We now call it multiple sclerosis, but they called it hysterical paralysis. And they found women who lost vision in one eye, if they put a metal plate of the right type, right area, like brass over the side of the face, the vision paralysis uh, or blindness shifted immediately to the oh, other side. That is the amazing work in biophysics, which all stopped right around the time the pharmaceutical industry came around. It's as if somebody said, you knock that nonsense off or we're going to be out of here. But what I want you to know is that most of these illnesses affect women because a woman has two X chromosomes and that's where most of the immune genes are on. That's more likely to see immune illnesses um, by 75% in women. So whether it's multiple sclerosis, which used to be called hysterical paralysis, uh, lupus, which was a neurosis, uh, fibromyalgia and CFS, long COVID, uh, MCAS, all of these are being treated uh, by some doctors as people being crazy. It is simply not acceptable. And I think it's okay to be vocal now. And um, to, you know, don't do it in a way that's going to make people confirm, yeah, she's just a nut. It's like, no, you go online, you note that this person is abusive. Yeah. Yeah. Post a review. Yeah. And so that, that you can help other people avoid that person. You know, that, that just in that self, to, to have an MD get def protectively, righteously, angry on the behalf of all of us who've been treated like that is so healing. It's just, it's just healing because we're social creatures. And so we can know we're, that was wrong, but if we don't have a mirroring of it, it's not real because of that we're social. So to have you mirror, Hey, that you, you thought that was abusive. You're right. That was abusive and not okay. It's just, thank you. Thank you yep. for that. A hundred years ago, it was wrong to call women hysterical paralysis because they're crippled with MS. Nowadays, it would be nobody would dream of that. If a neurologist did that, they would have them drawn and quartered. Right. Forty years ago, with fibromyalgia, and they said, "Oh, it must be med student depression because he's not better." It was understandable. Yeah. Nowadays, if they're implying that they're crazy. It's it's just like saying, oh, and this MS woman is hysterical paralysis. No, it's just not okay anymore. It's We've gotten okay. more past that. And it's the same with MCAS, you know, another immune disorder. They're all related. I just want to share this from Amy um, while we're talking. Thank you, Amy. Amy, Amy I've been there, done that myself, yes. Um, know that what you have is very real very treatable. But here's a trick, and I'm going to mention this. As you start getting better, we can tell you how to get rid of the MCAS. And more important to me, the part of the whole big picture, the uh, fatigue, the pain, the achiness, the orthostatic intolerance and POTS, and the list goes on. You know, you, you settle the immune system, and then you go after all these other things. You can get well. That's why I'm here today. Nobody's paying me to be here. I'm here because I've been where you are, and I've, you know, instead of me left me homeless, 
and in the last 47 years, I've published eight studies on 10 books, um, how many medical textbook chapters on, on this area, because the reason we don't hear anything about this is there's no expensive medication. Right. And doctors know what the drug company voices in our heads tell us. They set up our conferences. They spoon feed us the journals that are basically on the payroll. But drug advertising, they are hooked on drugs. We hear exactly what the pharmaceutical industry wants as physicians. And we're also taught that anything they don't tell us is quackery. Yeah. Um, so anything that works that's cheap, your doctor is going to be convinced they have to protect you from. So and here we are. Uh, I don't take money from any of the pharmaceutical industry. I don't take money from any supplement companies. Uh, there are two products I make myself just for transparency, which is the Shine Ribose and the Ribose in a smart energy system. So if you want to say, hey, you're here. just selling stuff, don't buy those two. And they can get everything else and still get well, and I'll be a happy camper. Uh, it's just a transparency thing. So I'm here for oh, you. Okay. Yeah, we'll get into that. And then I'm going to pull those links. Mm -hmm. okay. And let me know the questions you have. Let's, let's just start. We have some that we promised to answer, and then we'll have a lot that'll come in. So start posting your questions just as um, Dr. Teitelbaum is, is talking, and we'll get to as many as we can here today. <laughs> and we have a little extra time here today. So this is kind of a special Facebook Live. But let's just kick it off at the top here in terms of what do you see as the triggers for MCAS? So the most common associations that I'll see will be chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. So taking a step back, these are energy crises that basically exhaust your body's control systems, including the immune system. So triggers, uh, it's, and number one, you've tripped circuit breaker called the hypothalamus. So it's like saying, how many ways can you trip a circuit breaker in your home? I can go through hundreds of them. Any infections that the immune system does not recognize is gone. And it doesn't, it could be viral, it could be a spirochetal, it could be fungal, it could be any infection where the immune system constantly is fighting and doesn't know to turn off. So the immune system starts to get exhausted and just fighting out at everything, um, including the IgE antibody system, and the histamine system. Um, but any severe stress, any emotional traumas, PTSD kind of things can trigger the sensitivity on the limbic system level. Um, and then hypothyroid, low adrenal can certainly set you up. We, there's... There are literally hundreds of triggers, things that exhaust your energy and things that overwhelm your immune system. And, and so that's what it really turns into. I mean, that we can boil it down to, you don't have to, we've got everything from brand new beginners to advanced practitioners on here. You don't even have to know what the limbic system and the hypothalamus are to know that it's if it drains your energy battery, your energy system, and then what was your second one? It exhausts your immune system. The exactly. immune system never knows that that infection is fighting is gone. So yeah. it's as if the armies have a battle and they blow the alarm doo, 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 to this charge. And you can sustain that for an hour or two or three or four. But say that that alarm never shuts off. And three weeks later, the army on the battlefield is just shooting each other and itself, and it's just overwhelmed and exhausted. It's lost its ability to, fo to focus. That's similar to what's going on with um, MCAS. And so many people, what we really want to focus on here today was POTS and pain and then the SHINE protocol, which we'll get into, and you guys were going to want to know about this. Um, and, and just so you all know, this is very different from the talk in the summit. So these will dovetail nicely, but you're going to get really different information in each. Uh, let's just start to shift into um, POTS and pain. And uh, what are some ways to reboot those? And we may even have to do this bigger question, which is why would we reboot our entire system? Mm -hmm. Maybe we go there first, and then we can go a little more detailed in the POTS and the pain. Well, the brain is kind of like a big computer. And when your computer is going haywire, you call the computer tech, the tech support people. And what's the first thing they, they ask you? 
did you turn it off and back on? Because sometimes when things go totally spiraling out on complex systems uh, and our immune system qualifies for that, our autonomic nervous and auto, uh, qualifies for that, rebooting the system is important. Now you can't turn your whole body off, could be dead, but there are ways you can reset the nervous system, you can reset the different systems. Um, so a very good one would be ANS rewire, the autonomic nervous system rewire, or also dynamic neural retraining system. Uh, that reboots the neurological response uh, to the sensitivities. NAET, if you have specifically food sensitivities, not so much MC uh, mass cell activation, but if you're sensitive to specific foods, NAET, which is an acupressure technique, is brilliant. Um, so there's many ways to reboot the system, uh, but the reason we need to is because it's a complex system that's gone fritzy, and that's how you set reset them. Yeah. <laughs> So then what if we drill in more deeply into specific, so a couple of your areas of many years of specialty, but the pots and the pain, mm -hmm. how do we reboot those? Because they're both related to the nervous system. Well, here it's, let's start with the pots then. The, what happens is when there's a low energy drop, uh, basically energy drops to a certain critical level, the areas that use the most energy for their size go offline first. Mm -hmm. So you have something like an infection, you have low thyroid, poor sleep, situational stress, whatever it is that's draining the energy level, energy levels come down, they go down this high. Now, suddenly a circuit breaker in the brain called the hypothalamus, a little almond-sized guy right back and you know, down deeper inside, it controls sleep. So suddenly you'll find, mm -hmm. I can't sleep and get restored to sleep anymore. Yeah. It controls hormones. So across the board, thyroid, adrenal, reproductive hormones. But it controls autonomic function, which is POTS. There's blood pressure and pulse and gut function. That's all on that circuit. You flip that circuit breaker as energy drops. Suddenly we stand up. We're a big bag of water, right? Gravity is going to send all our blood down to our legs. Uh, we had to develop that autonomic nervous system to send the blood back up to the brains, heart, lung, muscles, all the other places that need it. And when it doesn't, when it stays in your legs, that's called POTS. Mm -hmm. Because your blood volume suddenly drops and your heart rate trying to compensate speeds up. Now, after people have had this long enough, you don't see the pulse go up after five years, 10 years. You'll see the blood pressure go down. The ability to compensate is stressed. Um, so you trip that circuit breaker and you turn the circuit breaker back on and the pots goes away. You turn the circuit breaker back on, the autonomic system works. And we talk about in the other episode um, that, that Beth was talking about, we'll talk about how do you shine to turn the system back on and reboot it by restoring energy. But what are simple things you can do for POTS? Number one, increase salt intake. Mm -hmm. We have this national idiocy of salt restriction. <laughs> Crash and burn and do that. Cut down sugar. Increase water. Use compression stockings. And that's the first four out of over 20 things that you can do. These are simple at-home kind of things. Mm -hmm. The easiest way is you can email me uh, for the POTS information sheet or the CFS to say, if you say you have CFS or Fibro or, or MCAS, uh, I'll go ahead and send you the POTS information sheet. My email address is fatigue, D-O-C, fatigue doc at gmail.com. These are free. I'll just email them to you. I don't put your names on any mailing list. It's not like, oh, here's an information. We don't do that. I send you the stuff. I delete your address. It's just... This is here to give you information that you need. They can uh, sign up for an email list if they want to on the website. If you want to be added to our email list, we have a free newsletter. And that's your only email list I keep. And people who buy supplements on my websites, we have we have that so we can contact them. Um, the website that I have for supplements is endfatigue.com. But pretty much all of these can also be purchased on Amazon. Um, and I, I just, I don't make a penny of the stuff when you buy it on Amazon except the two products I make. So it's just... I, I know I, I go overboard in, in this whole being clean with the transparency. It says as a physician, when somebody's selling me something, I tune out. 
and this information is too important for you to reclaim your health. So I want you to know that there's a way you can get this knowing that there's no financial tie, anything. That's pure, it's from the heart. This is yeah. me helping you get better because I've been where you are. Yeah. So that's the reason I say this stuff, blah, blah, blah. What was the second product? We're going to grab a link here for you. You said ribose earlier, and there was a second one. Uh, the We're smart gonna... energy system. Smart. Okay, we'll bring all that up in here. In yeah, the those are two that I, that I make. We'll be talking to two talks of over 50 to 100 things that can help you, that you can do on your own or medications or the rest. Um, so the information sheet will go through everything through Avrabinine and all the other medications that can help the POTS. Um, and this gives you an organized thing. Here's how you and your doctor do it. Here are the things you can do on your own. Here are the things you can say, hey, doc. And, and again, don't ask for 10 things at once. Ask for one or two, or the doctor will tune out on you. Um, and you just go down the list. You'll find the POTS will be much better. So POTS is not hard to treat. There's not sure if you have POTS. The information sheet will give you a 10-minute pulse test you can do at home. That will tell you in 15 minutes whether you have POTS. You don't need a till table test. That's an awful test beyond being yeah. expensive. Okay. Um, we've got a couple other questions, and then we'll just open it up and see what people mm -hmm. want to talk about. So we talk about pain? Yeah, let's talk about pain. Okay. Many of you who have um, MCAS, uh, mass electrolation, will also have pain um, because you have fibromyalgia. Why do you get pain in fibromyalgia? Mm -hmm. Well, it starts like this talked about energy level dropping from anything that causes an energy crisis, poor sleep, infections, we talked, you know, the whole thing. When energy drops to a certain place, you trip the circuit breaker. If energy continues to drop, muscles are the next thing that use the most energy for their size. So um, what happens when you don't have enough energy? Do the muscles go loose and limp? No. You have a heavy workout. You don't come home and say, honey, my muscles are all loose and limp. You say they're all tight. You know, can you rub them for me? Because when muscle muscles are like a spring, and if they don't have enough energy, they get locked in the shortened position and they hurt. Uh, so you start getting pain all over your body as muscles shorten and they get tight. Um, and that's how the muscle, how the pain begins in fibromyalgia. Now, as you have chronic pain, that chronic pain triggers what's called brain pain or central sensitization. Um, for that, low-dose naltrexone, which is brilliant. And you can email me and ask for the low-dose, uh, uh, ask for the naltrexone or LDN sheet, and I'll just add that in there. Let me it'll, pop it'll, that back up, their email address. So you guys, take a screenshot of this so you've got it if you if you need it later, because he's going to tell you a lot of things you can email for. Yeah. You can just make a list as we go. I'll automatically send the CFS fibromyalgia shine protocol and the POTS if you say that they have any of those things. But you can ask specifically if you have shortness of breath, post-COVID or in general of the disease, ask for the shortness of breath sheet. Um, you know, we can ask for the low-dose naltrexone sheet. You know, let me know what else you would like, and I'll throw this all free. I'll throw it all in there so it'll teach you what to do. Um, so for the muscle pain, it's low energy in the muscles. How do you address that? You put energy in the muscles. Uh, well, how do I do that? Put a heating pad on it. The heat is energy. Uh, if you go to an acupuncturist and they put a needle and turn it and put it in a muscle, that creates a current of energy. When you put a needle in and turn it in biological tissues, it makes electricity. So you create energy. If you put an infrared lamp over it, you create energy. If you put massage and mechanical, any energy you put into the muscles can help the muscle to release. Just don't hurt them. Um, so low energy causes the muscles. Then you have the brain pain. Again, low dose naltrexone. There's a lot of things for each of these. But brain pain, microglial activation, I'm no, speaking in tongue over here, just the brain amplifying the pain. Low dose naltrexone, give it two months. Um, start slow because the muscle will just sleep otherwise. Um, and then work your way up. And about two months, eight to 10 weeks, the effect is dramatic. And you can get it for like 50, 60 cents a day. It's um, a compounded pharmacy thing. So you'll need your doctor to work with you. Um, and then what happens is the brain pain, chronic brain pain trigger and autonomic problems trigger small fiber nerve neuropathy. 
mm -hmm. nerve pain. 44 I was asking about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll have numbness and tingling in the fingers. We have shooting kind of nerve like electric pains. And then lipoic acid, acetyl L carnitine, the overall protocol um, can help that. There's a wonderful technique called um, you know, micro, the microcurrent techniques, uh, frequency specific microcurrent or frequency specific dot com. Uh, brilliant for chronic pains that you can't help in general. So, you know, and let me throw one other kind of, kind of migraines. Uh, vitamin B2, riboflavin, 400 milligrams a day of riboflavin decreases migraine frequency 67 percent magnesium dramatically lowers it. the quickest way to get rid of an acute migraine is one gram of magnesium iv over 15 minutes eliminates 85 percent completely eliminates the headache and uh in each what case what form of magnesium would you use for that in an iv um, i don't care magnesium chloride is fine magnesium okay. sulfide is fine People whatever you kind of need to know what to ask for and no, i would just, uh, ask for magnesium ask for Preservative free. I'm not going to get that on the hospital. Either magnesium. No, no, no. I would just ask for a gram of magnesium IV over 15 minutes. That's Most people can get the preservative free at the functional medicine clinic. Right. But the functional medical clinic is going to know what to give you for the migraines. You go to the ER. That's what I'm saying. So the functional medicine clinic, they know what to give you already. They know if they if they have an infusion center, they're going to know about this. The ER doctors won't know about the research, and that's yeah. when you have to kind of walk them through. Um, and then food sensitivities. Most are associated with food sensitivities. And then the NAT can be very helpful. So blah, blah, blah. Sinus uh, pain, that's usually candida overgrowth. Um, irritable bowel syndrome, gas floating diarrhea constipation is candida overgrowth. Unless it smells like what we call silent but deadly, so sulfur oh God, my, when you pass gas kind of things, that's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So how's that for a five minute quick, hey, here's what's causing your pain and how to make it go away. That was very succinct. Mm -hmm. We're talking about sensitivities. We've got um, three other questions we committed to answering and then we'll open it up. Let's just play this out. We have so many sensitive people in this audience, people who they, they would have to start with about 25 or 50 milligrams of magnesium. If they open a B2 capsule, if they're going to start B2. They got to start with the tiniest fairy dusting. Some mm -hmm. people take the whole 400 milligrams. Some people are going to have to build up like I did from mm -hmm. the tiniest amount because of that hypervigilance of the limbic system. Um, can you just talk about how sensitivities play in with all of this and how mm -hmm. I've rebooted mine. I'm even the only food I don't eat anymore is I don't, I don't do cow dairy, uh, very much. And, um, I don't eat gluten, but I was down to 10 foods 15 years ago. Yeah. And gluten so and dairy are, are very different, uh, food sensitivities, uh, and food allergies, let me say, are different from the MCAS sensitivities. Um, and then the type that we see here are different from classic IgE food allergies. Mm -hmm. And so we use the word food allergies to mean totally different things. And you need to know which one you're addressing. Um, the sensitivities we're talking about here are predominantly where our immune system, often through our psyche, um, is seeing something as a threat and attacks it, even though it's something that's normal to the body. And we see this when the immune system's on overdrive and it's just everything that's coming in, it's just, it's no longer, it's too exhausted to distinguish friend from foe. And some days it's working better and some days it's not. And some days it, this looks like the enemy and some days this looks like the enemy and it's just random. That's the MCAS. Um, as opposed to there is a, a, I don't want to say hardwired, but softwired. Um, say you had a severe trauma. You're sitting there eating your ear of corn at a summer picnic and you watch your dog get run over across the street when you're six years old. And you imprint this thing of dog got killed, eat corn, and the psyche correlates them. And we won't even remember what the triggers are for a lot of these sensitivities where the immune system says, hey, um, a bigger problem these days is when I was a kid, uh, I was your age, uh, you know, the um, the Madison Avenue 
uh, advertising exec's mantra was sex sells. If you wanted to sell something, you had you know, a pretty lady or a handsome guy and you had him next to the TV or you had him next to the car or what, beer or whatever you're trying to sell and it sold. You know, yeah. so that, was, that was the mantra. Nowadays, it's fear and divisiveness sells. And um, if you can scare everybody to death and make them hate each other, that's good for business. So you may have noticed anytime you turn on the media and even on Facebook or seeing that or, you know, in the uh, social media, when you see people that are pushing, you know, it, it's part of growing in this modern world is what I call discernment. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of right or wrong, or it's just what you're choosing. And I like in terms of kind of where I move my tiller in the direction I want and take my boat of who I am. Um, to ask a simple question, is this pushing love or is it pushing fear? Mm -hmm. And if it's pushing fear, I'm going to say thank you and let it go. I'm going to go to the love direction. Um, is it pushing joy or is it pushing hate? You know, these are all, you know, so it's, I'm not saying one is good or one is bad. I'm just saying this is how I choose to steer. Um, when you're steering into being afraid of everything, uh, understand, uh, here's a key thing that we, if we got this in medicine, it would put us ahead a hundred years. The immune system is guided by our psyche. The, our eyes to the, of whether to be afraid for the immune system to kind of sound the alarms is the eyes and the adrenal and, and that whole sympathetic nervous system. Um, if we go fear, 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 we're afraid of something, our immune system goes off. And it used to be that there would be something like a bear in a, in a village that would make us afraid every couple months. And now it's every time you turn on the news, every time you look at anything, it's like, be afraid of what? Everything, everyone. And we're wondering why we're seeing autoimmune diseases where our immune system is ex overwhelmed and exhausted, striking out blindly at everything. Yeah. So yes, you can let your psyche know through different techniques, whether it's sitting in nature, meditation techniques, um, even simple hypnosis to go and let know all safe, all clear. And start turning off this bullshit out there. People who are willing to kill you for dollars by keeping you scared and hating each other. Seriously, they are not your friends. They're all good people. I never met anybody in my life who was a bad person, but I just, some serial killers I don't want to hang out with. And in the media, they're all good people, but it's all, I'm, if I'm quoted correctly 20% of the time, I'm quoted, I don't know why they still do, I'm quoted a lot in the media, standard me, uh, mainstream and other media. Um, but if I'm quoted where it's accurately reflecting what I'm saying 20% of the time, that's a lot. The reporters are told by the editor, this is what you're going to prove in the story. Get three quotes as part of your contract from an expert. Find words that fit what you're going to say anyway. If you can't, if he doesn't, if the expert doesn't give the words, well, you paraphrase or just make stuff up. Um, it's a fiction on both sides. Talk about fake news and we point to the other side always. No, it's both sides. If it leaves you feeling bad, if it leaves you hateful, if it leaves you full of fear, turn it off and let your immune system and your sensitivities settle down and heal. Mm. Or not, but. <laughs> your choice. <laughs> yeah, I had to stop watching news and I can watch fantasy films, but if, mm. if, if, it, if it seems realistic and it's violent, I don't, I don't watch it because I can feel it in my nervous system. Yeah, I love fantasy. I love science fiction, but I like my fiction to be labeled fiction. Right. Then my immune system doesn't worry about it. But if it's labeled news and the aliens came and are bombing with a space race, and it's like, this is the news, my immune system is going to, you know. Yeah. So be picky about what you yeah. Watch Yeah. Watch Hallmark movies. <laughs> um, so let me say one other thing for pain, too. For those of you with pain, there's a wonderful herbal mix called curamin. That's a good general because it settles inflammation. It's not curcumin. It has that, but C-U-R-A-M-I-N. Um, one to two tablets three times a day. Give it six weeks. 
um, it's the first thing I'll start people off. And it's been a pain relief miracle for people who can be, be combined with any of the medications, any of the pain medications. Um, it's just kind of brilliant. And for those of you who get hangry, irritable when hungry, uh, that's low adrenal, get adrenoplex. Those two simple things, two quick things, and a good multi, I kind of like clinical essentials, um, can start you on the way. But again, pills can help, but you have some problems with help pills because you get sensitive. So start by deciding what you're going to watch and pay attention to. I'm going to popping these. I'm going to pop. Oh, it looks like Jamie's got them. Jamie's popping these in links in for you guys, the products that you're talking about. Thank you, Jamie. Well, two, two last questions that we had to start with, and then we'll do open, um, open dialogue here. Let's just talk about your published studies, um, particularly on fatigue for myalgia and long hauler. And we, we try to say long hauler because the C word's being censored. I'm even in video, and so we don't want this to get taken down. Um, I think it's a little better now, but it's still being really watched. Yeah, so we, just say, we say long hauler. Long haulers works. So, yeah. And then um, we're talking about the Shine Protocol. Isn't it funny that we have to kind of step to do a Texas two-step over our words where the industry can say whatever they damn well please. Um, so I have eight studies well, seven that I've published, an eighth one that I've completed um, on effective treatments. A number of the studies are negative. So those, eh, you know, um, it's too bad. We know it's false studies to be positive, but not everything works. But then, you know, um, the SHINE protocol, uh, we have two studies. One of them randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study put together with the help of people at the NIH. Um, we've looked at things like the smart energy system. Um, that's the study I'm getting ready to publish, which was dramatic. Uh, the one thing I keep on my desk is HRG80 red ginseng. I don't know if you probably can't make that out. But HRG80 red ginseng, get the chewable tablet. Oh, red ginseng. Okay. That's what I take. He said that we did a study of 188 people um, who had at least a 50% drop in function and it just turned their lives around. They had average as much as 60 to 70% on average. 60% uh, improved and usually about 60 plus percent increase in energy cognition, improved pain went down, sleep improved. It was just, and for the chewable tablets, it's nice because one, it's a very high absorption because it has something called gamma cyclodextrin, very natural, very wonderful. Um, but I just take half a tablet. You can take, an eight, you can be what I call a cheap date and an eighth of a tablet may be all you need or less. And because it, with the sensitivities, sometimes you get the same effect with a teeny, teeny dose. Um, so it's always okay uh, to start with the low dose. But the other thing is, you want your psyche, you're, you're having, when you put something in the mouth, most of you are experiencing what I call the uh-oh effect, where it's like, uh-oh, what's this going to do? And I can give you a placebo pill with nothing in it, and your psyche is going to go, uh-oh, what's this going to do? And just that that state of mind, you can take an empty capsule, it will trigger something. So you mm -hmm. want to honor that. It's kind of like a you know, if a dog's been beaten with a stick enough times and it starts to cower in a corner and it sees somebody walking by with a, a shovel or a stick and it, even if that stick's not bent for it, it, it gets this reaction. And this is what's happening with your psyche, with the sensitivities. Honor that. When you get something you want to try, first of all, just put it in your hand for a few seconds. Decide, I'm not going to take this for at least a week. For now, I'm just going to put, uh, put it in my pocket for a couple of days. Yeah. And when it's, and then you can ask, okay, does it feel comfortable to open, the, to take a little nibble or put a little bit? Not yet. I'm just going to keep it in my pocket a couple of days. And eventually it's going to feel like, okay, it's like when you put a hand out to a dog, that dog can smell it. Eventually that's going to feel okay. And it'll be, then you can take a little bit and say, well, just this little bit. And we'll see how it feels. And we'll wait two days. Go really slowly because that's how you, you break the adverse conditioning. You get rid of the uh-oh response so that your psyche can feel safe with this new treatment. Start yeah. doing that. You want to honor your psyche, uh, just like you would a puppy who's been beaten. 
Mm. And this is a simple way to do that. That's a lovely way to do it. A anything else you want to share on the studies before we talk about the SHINE protocol? Well, the, we did the HIG-80. We did uh, four studies on post-viral chronic fatigue syndrome, the fibromyalgia, that showed that these treatments work very nicely for that long COVID is simply one more type of post-viral chronic fatigue syndrome. There are dozens of post-infectious chronic fatigue syndromes for fibromyalgia. This is just one more. We don't have to be starting and reinventing the wheel all over again. The, the low-dose naltrexone, the orthostatic intolerance, all these things, uh, MCAS, are part of long haulers because they're part of post-viral and post-infectious CFS um, and fibro. So, you know, the, we treat it like something new, and that's why it's going to be 30 years before the NIH comes up with anything useless, before they finally get an expensive medication. We got it! Hey, we have 27 cheap treatments. No! No! <laughs> no! no! Quackery! <laughs> um, hey, we have one that's expensive and patentable. Woohoo! Sorry, <laughs> but that's kind of how it works. Yeah. Um, and NIH exactly. is not less than nice people. But most of them aren't looking to spend the rest of their life working at the NIH. They want to go through that revolving go door in government and go work in industry, which means if they do things that industry likes, they will. Now, for those of you who watch Game of Thrones, a a Lannister always pays his debts, and the pharmaceutical industry always pays his debts. You do what it wants, you will get a good job. You don't, they'll go like, no. Um, so you will find all these things, uh, effective treatments, if they are cheap, most will either get attacked or ignored. Even if you have big studies. I mean, how many of you, uh, I don't want to politicize this, I'm not going to talk about the ones that got heavily attacked, but metformin, the medication, decreases the risk of getting long COVID by 50 to 67%. This is in a British medical journal, uh, a Lancet study. Um, and of almost a thousand people, big study, a very, very clear, you know, blinded, uh, randomized. If you take metformin, a cheap ten dollar for the whole course of medication, very safe, uh, within the first four days of getting COVID symptoms, your risk of getting long COVID goes down sixty seven percent. It was even in the Huffington Post they they. Buried it. I mean, it wasn't front page. If it had been expensive medication from one of their advertisers, so it would be front page every day, you know, and you'd hear hallelujah playing in the background. <laughs> okay, but here it was like, you know, kind of, hey, we mentioned it. Um, anyway, good people. Our system is broken. It is broken. Yeah. It's had a wrong start from the very beginning with the Rockefellers funding the medical schools and having their fingers in the pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, and I'm sure they're nice people, but they really screwed us over royally. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the SHINE protocol and then let's open up questions. Okay. SHINE protocol uh, is how to increase energy production. You have an energy crisis, you trip the circuit breaker, turn that circuit breaker back on, restore energy production. Uh, shameless plug, that book over my shoulder there, uh, From Fatigue, fantastic. We'll teach you how to do it. We'll grab a link for that here for you guys. It's a great book. It's it's like I said, that's the one that the first edition, which was meant to be a pamphlet, came out in 1995. Um, this edition, again, I understand brain fog. So we have what are called brain fog friendly summaries. Uh, you can go through the whole book in an hour just for the summaries. They hit the high points and decide what we want to do deep dives. Um, how to optimize energy. Sleep, but I can't sleep. My sleep center is not working. The sleep center, remember that you tripped the circuit breaker, right? We talk in the in the show. We talk about how you can get your eight hours sleep a night. You can hormones, uh, thyroid, adrenal, the blood tests are meaningless. Not meaningless, but they're caca. They're just the normal ranges are meaningless. At least the way they're used. Um, low adrenal. Um, low reproductive hormones, and the other H is hypotension or POTS, uh, address that. I would be infections, and there's dozens that need to be looked for, not by testing, 
but based on symptoms and then treated nutritional support, you know, the clinical essentials, multivitamin, HRG, AD red ginseng, um, and the smart energy system. Um, those three together can as much as double most people's energy. Um, and the uh, exercise has able, but here's the thing, if you exercise too much, you're gonna crash and burn. But if you have POTS, you have that stand up and get lightheaded, uh, one more tip that's in the information sheet is you can exercise, but you have to be horizontal, like a rowing machine or lying down and doing light weights and starting very, very slow. Because if you try to exercise standing up, your blood rushes to your legs and you crash and burn. So a little bit of walking is okay. But these people say, just do heavy exercise. Um, tell them, just go to hell, you know. You get pro-exertional malaise, and it doesn't work. Mm. Um, there's nothing wrong with you. Get get out and exercise more. Yeah, guys, an idiot. Let them go. Anything so else on the shine protocol? That's fine. And there's, there's literally hundreds of treatments that can help. The trick is uh, checking from person to person. I actually hold the U.S. patent for a computerized doctor. That was me. Um, I made it for people with fibro so that they could go online and have a computer assess all their uh, symptoms and their blood tests and stuff like that. You can't really do that anymore. The FDA says, oh, pat on the back, pay us $500 million to be able to make a new medical device and we can go ahead and do that. You know, uh, and it's like, well, I can't do that. So, um, but instead what we have is an energy analysis program. It's not for diseases, for optimizing energy. Oh, but we can do. So at energyanalysisprogram.com, or if you go to the Vitality 101 and I'll talk about, you know, and just step three on there, there's actually a free quiz, but it's complex. It will go through hundreds of symptoms and uh, all the pertinent tests that you have. You don't need to have the test, but if you have them, it'll analyze the pertinent ones and determine what the key causes of your energy drain are so that both using medications and natural options, you can optimize energy production to reclaim health. So what was that website again? I'll, I'll pop it up here. www.energyanalysisprogram.com. We used to charge $400 a piece for people to do it, but we told people if they couldn't afford, we'd let them do it for free. And 80% came back saying, I'm on Medicaid. I can't afford anything from the illness. Yeah. Uh, so my wife and I decided just to make it, we simplified it and made it free for everybody. So if you want, grab a screenshot of that. If you want to um, look that up later, you all. Um, we'll leave that up for just a few minutes. Anything else before we open up the floor? Let's We've do questions. Probably I'm 50, happy. We have probably 50 questions in here already. I'm happy, I'm happy to stay as long as you are, Beth. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, let's, let's hit. I'm just going to go from the top down. Everyone, please only submit your question one time. That allows me to find the new ones and to go um, to get more questions in. So just one time. And um, uh, Dr. Teitelbaum's pretty much open to answering anything that he can. So let's just start with this first one that came in from Lisa about does MCAS make your hands and feet burn? And hi, no. Lisa from Kentucky. No, uh, the it's not the MCAS. It's the small fiber neuropathy associated with the fibromyalgia associated with the MCAS. So the hand and feet burning, first of all, there's paresthesis with numbness and tingling. Um, but then that's one thing. But then there's the burning that you can have in the extremities uh, that's more neuropathic, usually small fiber neuropathy in this disease. The book goes through each of that and how to do that. The key thing is address the underlying uh, fibromyalgia, do, do the low-dose naltrexone, give it time, do the shine protocol. You can add lipoic acid, 300 milligrams twice a day, and acetyl L-carnitine, 1,000 milligrams twice a day. For very, very, very severe cases, especially if light touch hurts, depression called allodynia, ketamine, uh, mm -hmm. the ketamine nose spray by prescription uh, can be very, very helpful. Um, the thing is that the IV ketamine is about a thousand dollars a pop, and insurance won't cover it. Um, you need it. I've gotten it for a five hundred in the Midwest. Ooh, okay. Thank so, good. But, nice. but it is pricey, yeah. But it, it but, that was a game changer. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, know this a simple uh, life hack. 
over here, the prescription nose sprays are about 800 of those because okay, they make them for depression. The compounding pharmacies can make it up at about 2 to $3 a dose in, in a nose spray. But it is hallucinogenic. I mean, basically, it's like taking LSD. So you need to... Um, Bring on the dose, but yeah. It's, it's, you know, know your own comfort measure for if, if you had two bottles of tequila, how would you be doing? Or, and, or be Most with somebody who can walk you through it. They start with really low. They, we, we talk with the ketamine clinics and see if they'll start with five or 10, especially if somebody's never had a psychedelic experience, then mm -hmm. we don't want them terrified. Or go to the clinic, get the IV once for the thousand dollars. If see what it is, so you know what it is, and then ask before you get the IV. Let them know you can't afford more than one. Will they write for the prescription nose spray from a compounding pharmacy? Um, because before you spent the thousand, they still want the thousand. Is a little more likely to do that. Um, yeah, and then you can microdose it. And you can microdose it. That's go. a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have. Um, Alias, I hope I pronounced your name right, from France. Yes, always access to replays. And what do we have to do concretely if we have abdominal cramps with POTS? Okay, so here's the thing. If abdominal cramps and squeezing the hearts are kind of two different areas. So um, the if it's from POTS, you treat the POTS. The information sheet will help that. If you have abdominal cramps, most often... Um, it's if you have gas, bloating, diarrhea, or, or constipation and gas, uh, and the gas is cramping, most often that's irritable bowel syndrome. Most often that's going to be from candida. Uh, the book talks about how to treat the, the candida. Uh, most doctors don't acknowledge that there is such a thing as candida unless it's in your vaginal area or killing you. Anything in between. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no test for it, so it doesn't exist, dang it. You know, okay, whatever. Um, but the way you tell if it's bacterial is what I mentioned before. If you have the gas and it smells like rotten eggs, like sulfur, that's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth that takes a different treatment. But all of that is discussed in how to do that. Um, so abdominal cramps is a gas as a candida is a bacterial those are two most common things you can see it autonomic also but you treat those two and that will often help it go away i will mm -hmm. also note since you live in france there is a supplement we did two studies on called recovery factors uh, www.recoveryfactors.com it is available everywhere in the world except the united states because the company doesn't have a spare $200,000 to go through the regulatory process. Um, but everywhere in the world, it's available. The two studies show its effect in uh, people with uh, disabling fatigue, uh, pain. This whole process um, was dramatic. And it's just uh, so get to recoveryfactors.com give it two bottles and uh, there's a 6% probability it will rock your world and help also the gut symptoms and help the Ibers Lee study on those two authors. The digestive symptoms improve dramatically. It's an immune complex. So very good. If, if for those of you out of the United States, uh, easy to just start with that. For those of you in the United States, uh, the company's hoping in the next 10 years to raise some money to go through the regulatory system. And that's a kind of um, a peptide, is that right? Yes, it's a peptide that uh, these uh, small polypeptides used to uh, only be available IV and it'd be about five hundred to thousand dollars a pop. People would keep going in because they work, and then they, would, they figured out how to get it in a form that's uh, by tablets, so it's not expensive. Right, we're going to keep doing questions, you all. Um, but some of you may have to go here at the top of the hour. We're going to go a little longer so we can get more questions in. If you do have to go, just a reminder that um, to make sure you catch the summit, it's going on now. It's free, and Dr. Teitelbaum has a entirely different talk. There's a little overlap, but a lot of other information. And in my book, it was one of the most inspiring talks of the whole summit. So I hope you catch his talk and um, listen to the parts about surrender and the and and really how to unlock your your chronic illness. 
Um, so you can register for free. Now, once you register, it's going to take you to a page to buy the recordings if you would like. You don't have to. Once you put your name, email address in, you're registered. You have free access. Check your inbox. But if you would like the recordings, um, they keep them really low cost. I believe they're, I don't know the exact, I'm terrible with numbers, but it's under $100 to own the whole summit. Um, and so this was really um, from Dr. Kelly and I, our heart and all the all the speakers for you guys. Um, let's jump back into some questions here. So we have somebody asking about, let me find my spot again. Um Kunis syndrome. I'm not familiar with it by that name. Is there another name for that illness? Um, good question. That's the only one I know. Um, let me check. Is this is rare? Uh, allergic acute coronary syndrome. Allergic. Acute coronary syndrome. Okay, so it may be what they're talking about is used to be called Prince metals. They. Everybody likes to put different names on the things. When you have um, spasm of the coronary arteries and it mimics angina, what they'll do is they'll do a, a car catheterization, see clean vessels, and they'll say, hey, it's, it's a spasm. Now, most of the time it's not, unless they can trigger the spasm and actually see it and reproduce the chest pain. The best treatments that they give for that are nitroglycerin and magnesium. Magnesium over time decreases Prince metals angina or I guess the Kunis syndrome if there's a new new name to stick on the same old thing. Um, but here's the key thing for the other 99% of you who have chest pain and who don't have spasm in the artery of the heart, even though that's what you may be told because the doctor doesn't know about muscle pain. The vast majority of pain in this country is muscle pain. And most doctors have no idea how to do an exam for it vaguely know a concept that it exists but can't diagnose it because they can't do an exam for it because that's all quackery damn it that's chiropractics and osteopaths and those other quacks it's all nonsense you got literally this is kind of what we get in medical school you gotta protect people from being ripped off by these quacks muscle pain what i mean it's <laughs> you know it's sad but how can you diagnose a pain if you don't even know it exists so if you're having chest pain, again, go to your doctor, make sure your heart's okay. Or pain anywhere else, say pain along the along bone. And you go ahead, a simple thing, while you're having the pain, push with about five to eight pounds of pressure with your fingertips and see if you can reproduce or ease the pain. If you're pushing over the bony area and you don't have a fracture, which you'd know if you have the fracture, because not have pushed on it, um, that's muscle pain. If you feel a tender knot that reproduces pain, that's the trigger point. And it may be, for example, if you have pain here, classic tension headache, most often it's coming from three finger widths below the earlobe. You go three finger widths below the earlobe, push with your lower finger, you'll find a little knot in the muscle that turns the head from side to side, that's tender. That's what's referring pain here and across, then you know, okay, put a heating pad on, put a little bit of peppermint gel on here, and the headaches go away uh, or ease up. So if you can go ahead in the chest, most often it's what's called costochondritis. It's a misnomer. Mm -hmm. It's inflammation of the cartilage. It's not, it's the muscles. And these simple things are treating muscle pain. There's a wonderful compounding pharmacy called IT, like Tom, C, pharmacy. You can find them online. Your doctor can email or can write and just ask the pharmacist, uh, let them know that there's chest wall pain. Can he make a pain cream mix and prescribe it for you? And then you put it on like vanishing cream two, three times a day. After about six to eight weeks, it, it, the longer you've had the pain, the longer it takes to go away. Uh, but it works very nicely at easing this because it has six medicines but your blood value is nothing it's not absorbed beyond the muscles so people's sensitivities do great with it and it's very effective so you can do their nerve pain creams for the person who had the neuropathic pain uh, there are uh, muscle pain creams the compounding pharmacy alan there is brilliant and he's happy to speak with your doctor uh, itc pharmacy you can look it up online for sinuses, I make a sinusitis spray. 
uh, which I designed. I think they put my name on it. I don't get a penny for it, but it's um, the treating the candida with diflucan medication for six weeks, not one day, and the sinusitis spray. The sinusitis often goes away, as does a whole bunch of other symptoms. There's a lot that can be done compounded for sensitive people. And that compounding can make a big difference. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. Um, this is an interesting question from Parisa. Parisa, she's asking about, can you detox out excess histamine? So I'm used to I don't know. Lowering histamine. I know you can improve the pathways by with cofactors. Yeah, you know, I'm more likely to turn down the psyche, being afraid of everything, use mm -hmm. things like the pepsid and the antihistamines and all the other, you know, the quercetins and all the other things that everybody's talking about. Um, I just worry about, you know, decreasing the diet too much. Because what happens is everybody, well, let's do this diet. Now half the stuff is gone. I'm, right. I'm, I'll, I'll, let's try this diet. The other half of that's gone. That's what happened to me. So yeah. people paint themselves in a corner where they can only have six foods, and they're going to get food sensitivities when they do that. Yeah. Because you know that, that's what I did. And so I'm I'm a little leery about more and more and more limiting diets. There's other approaches I'm more likely to take. I love this question from Maria. I was pre-born four weeks and I've been sensitive since then. Can you heal even if it started so early? Yeah. Remember, the psyche was still experiencing things four weeks, you know, before you normally would have been born. Um, and it could be quite traumatic popping out four weeks early because you still sense the energy around you. And whether you're on a NICU or a neonatal intensive care unit or the rest, it was traumatic. So going to somebody who can clear the old traumas, there's a technique called emotional freedom technique. Mm -hmm. that can go back and there's a whole bunch of techniques but EFT is very good if there's things that you think about or you experience and you know you get nervous you can do that and they can just tap the acupressure points um, while you're having the feeling and you'll feel it's just like it melts way up the bottom of your feet you can do it in layers um, a lot of you are saying I don't have money to like go to practitioners you can find some online where you can kind of copy it for free but there's trembling um, so there's times you may feel that you feel like trembling. These are these old traumas trying to be cleared by your psyche. And mm -hmm. the psyche clears traumas, but one way it does is by trembling. Uh, if you saw the Taylor Swift song, Shake It Off, that's where the expression Shake It Off comes from. It's a trembling, it's a natural way of releasing it. Most, most mammals do that, but humans suppress it because we feel that's stupid, I'm not going to tremble. Let that trembling happen. It'll, it'll come off in waves. Um, and it's it's a really simple, low-cost thing to do that can be highly effective. So there's, in, in the book, I talk about countless ways to address the PTSD, to address the different types of traumas, to address different sensitivities and, and the rest. Um, but those are just some examples. Um, so can you heal even if you were, you know, eight months into this world? Of course you can. Okay, your, no, your volume's off. Okay. Um, oh, my what, my alarm was going off, so I had to turn it off. Okay, no worry. So what helps with the heat intolerance? Again, the heat intolerance is not so much an MCAS thing, although it can set off the histamine flush a little bit. First of all, make sure you're not taking anything with niacin. And a, mm -hmm. uh, niacinamide is okay, but sometimes you get a multivitamin that has niacin, and that will aggravate the flushing. But beyond that, look for the autonomic dysfunction, because that's a common part that gives a sense of heat intolerance and sweats. So the hypothalamus. And look at the pots. I was looking to see if I had your book here, but I've got it over next to my couch. Um, but can you talk more about <laughs> recommend from fatigue? Fantastic. Right over my shoulder. Yes. You know, that one right over there with the blue book, get the blue cover. You can get on Amazon from fatigue. Fantastic. We'll walk you through um, the, and they'll include mast cell activations and a big chapter on sensitive to everything. Uh, the MCAS is actually pretty straightforward compared to like the mold toxin 
uh, sensitivities, and then the food sensitivities are different. Uh, but it'll go through how to tell which one's which and then how to make them go away. And then that's just one piece. Uh, the whole thing, pain, uh, brain fog, insomnia, all of these are just how to tell which things are, are going on in your case, how to address them. That's It's been the best-selling book of all time on CFS and fibromyalgia, um, and for good reason. It's yeah. it, it really... You know, there are literally hundreds of treatments, natural and prescription in there, um, that can help you through each of these different kind of processes. And they're not all treatments you put in your mouth. They can be lifestyle or mind-body treatments. It's, it's the mix of all of these. And I was so excited to jump in. I forgot our disclaimers at the beginning. So I'm going to jump briefly here, which is this is, of course, all for information educational purposes. I'm not here to treat, diagnose, cure, prevent any illness. Some of the links are affiliate links, and I'm also like full transparency. So if you click on, for example, this Amazon link, um, Mass Health 360 doesn't cost anything more. We make a small percentage. Now, the links to um, Dr. Teitelbaum's um, products are not affiliate links. Um, the, that all goes to, to him. And um, but but we do unless you go to Amazon, if you buy them on Amazon, none of that goes to me, uh, except the ribose ones. Uh, but okay. if, if you didn't want to support website. me with it, then nfatigue.com. For yeah. those of you interested in doing affiliates, I will be setting up an affiliate program for my products on the website, uh, in about three months. We'd be happy to do that. Please. Um, and I just want to let people know that does mean that the company gives us a small percentage of the sale back and that goes to all these free resources. So there's never any pressure, but if you're looking for a way to support us back with all the free stuff we put out, you can, um, per if you're going to purchase something, if you click through our link, then that helps us back too. Okay. Let's see what else we can get into. Um, we've talked a bit about nerve like pain. Um, she's saying she's got this after COVID and she's got Bartonella. Okay, I'm not over impressed with the hygienics tests. I think three negative tests in 30 years of practice. And every other test has been positive. So um And we this audience follows Neil Nathan a lot and he's on here, and that's his preferred, so that's where Okay. It's let me let me say that you may or may not have Bartonella. The uh, IgG positive doesn't mean that it's active. Um, right. So I'm going to kind of ignore that piece of it because I'm not, you have nerve like pain in the, on your body. And that's a normal part of the small fiber neuropathy that basically comes with CFS and fibromyalgia and long COVID. Um, neuropathic pain, I would start with the low dose naltrexone. Um, you know, unless you're saying you caught COVID and then you got uh, Bartonella after that. You know, um, so again, you can see why I don't get invited to some conferences that are sponsored by the company. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to step on anybody's toes there. Uh, I tend to be a skeptic. Of, we're we're, per we're perfectly fine with your wh whatever your viewpoint is. I'm okay. seeing people get confused when Neil Nathan comes on and says Igenex, and and so we're just seeing different things, and it's okay that there's different viewpoints. Yeah, and they're very, very, very good people. And, and we know they're they really, all limited. They really want to help. They are awesome. I just even the standard medical tests, like tilt table testing, and even blood counts and thyroid tests. I'm not a fan. I'd rather use clinical symptoms. So. Yeah. The nerve-like pain in the arms, face, and legs. Uh, there are the topical pain creams that ITC Pharmacy can make the nerve pain creams. Uh, just make sure they leave out the cortisone component, uh, but your mother because if you use that on the face, it can age the skin. All the other ones are fine. Um, the gabapentin can be very helpful. As I mentioned, lipoic acid, um, acetylcarnitine, but also uh, vitamin B12. You'd, a good multivitamin that has the right amounts of uh, B vitamins. You don't want more than 45 milligrams of B6 that can aggravate nerve pain, but you need B6. You need B12 in high dosing. Uh, it may take months to heal the nerve pain. Um, again, they can consider small uh, fiber neuropathy later but, and do a biopsy and the organic labyrinth treatments for that, but way before we ever get to that. Um, 
just the low dose naltrexone, gabapentin, uh, the simple nutrients we talked about. You know, look up nerve pain, look up small fiber neuropathy in the book, and it will walk you through what you and your doctor through. Here's what you do. And I've had great experience also with nerve pain um, and CBD and, mm-hmm. and and getting into CBG, CBN, and then also um, PEA, like the Mirica brand PEA. Yeah, America is a good company for that. Um, so the PEA helps the central sensitization. Um, but the other thing, um, well, let's just, there's there's a lot there. Just know that this is very, very treatable unless yeah. you go to your regular doctor. Um, but if you go to a holistic doctor, um, ask for the lotus naltrexone and the gabapentin as a good place to begin is what, how, and the topical if needed. These are three very good ways to begin the process. I pour gas plus acetylcarnitine and a good multi as well. And Diane just said how much the naltrexone helped her. And then we were talking about IV ketamine earlier and um, I have done uh, a number to reboot my limbic system. And this last one, they gave me a pain dose and I went from a seven to an eight out of 10 on my pain scale daily to about a two or three and it's lasted now two months. Mm-hmm. Um, but don't, don't keep accelerating doses so people get tolerance. Right, right. Yeah, it has to be done. This is with an anesthesiologist. Um, but it was a game or changer. Or a holistic doctor. Yeah. <laughs> it was a game changer for me. Mm-hmm. Um, is it better to take B2 separately or is a B complex, Francis? No. Is that not the, the clinical essentials multivitamin will have optimal levels of the B vitamins. If somebody has migraines, then I would get an additional 300 milligrams of vitamin B2 for three months because that can help the migraines decrease frequency literally by 67%. I mean, it'll go down after about three months. What I find is once they've been on that for the, the, together, they can drop the additional riboflavin and just take what's in the clinical essentials. Most multivitamins have what we call what are called the RDA or ridiculous dietary allowances uh, <laughs> that prevent scurvy and beriberi. They don't have optimal amounts. Uh, the clinical essentials has the optimal amounts. That's why I like that one. Okay. Um, and then. Um... Connie's asking for some help here with her case. She's got Sears, MCAS, and Lyme. I like to read it out loud for people who have trouble reading. Plus mold toxicity. Years ago, was told I had severe CFS and fibromyalgia. Haven't been able to get much better for the past few years. I react to most medications and foods. What are your thoughts? Again, if you have severe sensitivities, I mean, for me, if you're out of the country, I'd start to recover factors. Um and in the U.S., I would start with the good multivitamin and the ACRG80 red ginseng at a low dose. Um, but I would work for sleep. But in your case, since you're sensitive to most everything, um, try the low-dose naltrexone liquid. So instead of the uh, the standard dose for people in narcotics is 200 milligrams a day of naltrexone, 50 to 200. For the immune effects, you may lose the effect of 5 milligrams you want three to four and a half milligrams. But a lot of people start at one-tenth of a milligram or one-twentieth of a milligram. And if they if they can't go over a quarter, they still do okay with that. So see what's comfortable for you. But start with resetting either dynamic neural retraining system uh, or if you tend to be, if you're more of a, I like yoga and la, 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 DNRS. If you're more somebody who's a sharp mind, wants everything logical, sequential, and put in a, in a brainy smurf kind of way, go with the ANS rewire. Mm-hmm. They both take you to the same place. They're both brilliant. The languaging is different. So go on the website, see which language appeals more to you. A good place to start would be one of those. And I've done a number of them. I just, I go through a program and then I do a different one and I get something else. And um, I just want to make a plug also for Kathleen King's Primal Trust, which is a oh, brilliant, beautiful one. And it's trauma informed, which I love about that. Mm-hmm. Hi, Leslie. Leslie's asking, what about if your bones hurt and all your joints? Okay. So here's the thing. The question is, is it muscle pain or if it's joint pain? If it's only the joints, and it's not traveling up, it can still be muscle. If it's red and inflamed, 
then you know that it's an inflammatory process. You need to see the rheumatologist and they need to check for autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or dozens of others that can cause joint inflammation because they trigger a secondary fibromyalgia, which triggers a mast cell activation syndrome. Um, and then all of these need to be treated. Uh, I will note that the curamin in head-on studies with Celebrex was as effective for rheumatoid arthritis um, as the Celebrex. Lodose naltrexone, brilliant for rheumatoid arthritis. The antibiotic doxycycline, which also does what lodose naltrexone does, but causes candida. Um, it, it helps microglial activation. Now I'm going blah, 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 blah whatever. The tetracycline can be dramatically effective for rheumatoid arthritis. You want to give each of these eight weeks. I start in the order that I gave and, you know, save the, the doxycycline. And then if the, this is one of the cases that most doctors, what they're taught about are the newest $24,000 a year medication that people need to take forever because mm -hmm. that's where the money is. Yeah. Um, and many of these cases, for example, if you have inflammatory bowel disease and they want to give you one of these, you know, the newest, most expensive. Um, what you need to know is this going to work for two years and it's going to stop working. They want to start you early. Mm -mm -mm. I'd save it for and against the wall. Rheumatoid arthritis. These are called disease modifying DAMA, DMARDS. Those, when they give you the expensive one and say, we want you on these, say yes, if it's rheumatoid arthritis. Those prevent disease. So again, your doctor knows what the drug company pharmaceutical reps and the advertising division tells them now he's saying ah, nonsense i'm going to conferences i'm reading journals sam and i'm evidence-based medicine <laughs> who pays for those journals any advertising for lexus is in there and you think the editors don't pick re peer reviewers that will support their advertisers and the conferences have you noticed that Every distinguished professor with a fancy grass up there are on the payroll of the companies paying for the conference. This is not evidence-based medicine. This is, to, to paraphrase a New England Journal of Medicine editor before I got canned, slick advertising masquerading as science. So, you know, it, it, it's good to be an informed consumer. Um, so if your joints are hurting all over, you need to see the rheumatologist. They need to... Um, rule in or rule out the autoimmune illnesses or other causes of that. Uh, if they say no, they're fine, then I would go with the curamin and I would go with the rest of the sign protocol. If you have fatigue and insomnia, you have a secondary fibromyalgia, whether or not you have an autoimmune disease. One third of cases with lupus, uh, MS, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, well, the, it's at about a third for uh, Sjogren's. For almost all of these major autoimmune diseases, one third of them have a secondary fibromyalgia. That's probably closer to half if you include milder cases. Okay, I think we can take a couple more here. And um, I think you've answered this, but I think people just need to hear some words of encouragement. So this is from Chelsea. Post-COVID, so many issues for what you're mentioning. Have you seen success? We'll say long haulers. Have you seen success in these types of patients? Yeah, totally. Long haulers is just post-viral CFS and fibromyalgia. It's the same thing. So here's the thing. You do the general shine and they get well, just like anybody else. Um, I don't, I, there's another medication can help, but it's just been so politicized. I don't even want to go into that. Um the I just go by the research. I don't have a politics of the side or the other. Um, it's just what the research shows. Um, so the long callers, most of the stuff we talked about will help for those who have shortness of breath. Post -co post long callers, um, email me for the shortness of breath information sheet, and that'll tell you because most of the time it's it's vagal nerve. It's not it's not dangerous. It'll scare you. And it'll tell you what to do and how to tell. Um, the if you have heart damage, you know, a heart attack, or myocarditis, cardiomyopathy, my there's a phone app, Cures A dash Z. Look up heart disease, it'll give you a recipe. Ribose, B vitamins, magnesium, um, CoQ10, it'll give you a recipe 
for uh, dramatically increases cardiac muscle efficiency, and you'll find a dramatic improvement. Um, you know, these are all safe. And I've, I've had people who are given death sentences from heart failure. The doctor said, you're going to be dead in two months, nothing I can do. And I told the person, you're right. The doctor was right. There's nothing she can do. And here, do this. And I, years later, I got an email, subject, how do you save my life? I mean, this is not uncommon. So again, I'm not against medications. I'm just against the way they're used and the way that the system suppresses the research on anything cheap, generics or natural medications. Um, so if you look at all the other issues that are lumped in with long haulers, it's funny. It's as if anything, technically, any persistent symptom after the infection is long haulers. It's as if you had a diagnosis of car crashes. <laughs> and you have people with skull fractures and you have people with abdominal liver punctures and bleeds and others with cardiac trauma and others who sprained an ankle and they're all being lumped together. Well, let's see what works. <laughs> you got to separate these things out into the different component groups. And that's why the NIH has already pissed away the $1.15 billion but nothing, nothing, zero, nothing to show for it because they didn't feel any need at all to ask anybody who has a clue about these diseases. We're the NIH. We don't know anything about it, but then nobody else will either. And the money, and, and that quickly, the money's gone with nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry if I'm frustrated. But, um, you know, I just want to thank you for giving voice to all of this because this we need to be talking about it. People are, are hungry to talk about it. And um, I, I am not someone who can be vocal like that because of my circumstances and and I can't be burned at the stake. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'm not an MD. And so I would be burned at the stake. But you can say it. You can give voice to it, and I'm, I'm, I'm just so I'm grateful. Old, I'm old enough. Yes. That, <laughs> it, it, it can still come and get me. They have. I mean, the government sent me a nice letter because I was putting out research showing that you know how it could save tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of lives. And the government said, "Thank you for voicing this research, but you know you have to pay four hundred million dollars in regulatory fees for every single natural product you want to talk about for treating a disease." Or we will close down your Facebook page and your uh, website and the rest uh, unless you don't mention any specific products and you can mention the research, but no products anywhere with them. Uh, so I got a love letter on my 60th birthday saying, drove me to the edge of bankruptcy. Um, mm -hmm. But then you learn how to do the Texas two-step and what you can't yeah. say and what you can't. Yeah. Um, and, and they're all good people. There was no meanness in it. It was just mm -hmm. a form letter that you can't talk about. If you, no matter if you have a hundred studies proving something works, if it's cheap and natural, that's considered unproven research, um, unproven treatments. That's the definition. Then it's unproven. What would make these proven when you have all the studies? You have to pay a, a regulatory fee of an average of four hundred million to two billion dollars for each one, which is why virtually nothing that's cheap, which means no generic medications and no natural remedies, anything that's not patentable, it is impossible to put through the regulatory process. With the exception, if you're a bear company and you have bear aspirin and you can push it through for preventing heart disease, which it doesn't really do. Um, you know, but generally in our country, it is illegal to effectively discuss anything that's not hideously and insanely expensive. Yeah, yeah, which, I mean, which is a, a huge disservice to and, all of us. Yeah, and no bad people. I've not met yeah. anybody out there who isn't the love. It's yeah. just we have a system, you know, we have institutions that are broken, full of good people yeah yeah that's right i think this is a good place to wrap up um this has just been remarkable there's probably there's still questions streaming in there's so much if you wanted to answer more um, i have another i have a meeting coming up um but you can always hop on the facebook page if you wanted to um you don't have to because i know the dialogue's the best yeah, I, don't, I don't know how to with that. So for, okay. 
for major questions or for the information sheets. If your questions are short, you can email me at fatigue doc at gmail.com and i'll get to the ones that i can but don't send me your whole medical history i'll hit delete if you have a one or two sentence question one or two line question i try to get to that yeah so take a screenshot of this um if you didn't catch it before that way you have it you can ask for all those information sheets you can go back and listen to this i know this was chock full of information but please register for the summit we've we've been working on this for a year dr kelly and i have and we're just so happy to have put this together for you all. Dr. Teitelbaum is headlining on day six. And all of the talks are this level quality. And so I really hope you'll take advantage of signing up. It's free. And I'm going to pop that back up for you real quick. Um, so the summit's going on this week. And then there'll be an encore weekend. And I have that link somewhere. I got a lot of, a lot of links in here. Here we go. Um, so this is where you register. When you register, it does then take you to a purchase page and people have gotten confused and thought it was requiring that you purchase, but it's giving you, you once you put your email address in, you're registered, that gives you, the next page gives you an opportunity to buy the recordings and the transcripts if you would like to own them. It's less than $100. The first price you see is the lowest. Um, if you're not ready to hit buy, my trick I'll share with you is to leave that window open um, because if you close it and then you go back again after you registered, um, you're going to have a higher price. So I just, I, I, would, I didn't like that, that kind of switch on myself. So I want to let you guys know, because that's from the Summit Production Company. That wasn't, we, we didn't put, do that. We just made the interviews. Um, but they still keep a really low price because you can imagine these summits are very, very expensive to put on and especially to offer them for free. Um, so if you do want the transcripts, um, no pressure, but it does help us to cover what we put together and, and all of the effort that went in for the past year and the huge teams that, that, that took. So thank you so much, Dr. Teitelbaum, for being with us. This was just amazing. Um, I, I just want to thank you from my heart and my soul for your work. Well, it's a labor of love and it's an honor. You know, I've, I've been where you are, been there, done that found a way out of the maze. So my goal and fun, and I, it's no sacrifice. People say, oh, oh my God, you're making such a sacrifice. No, I don't do sacrifices. This is a labor of love. This is a labor of joy. You can get your health back. And if I've helped you a little bit, even through my traumatic flare kind of things, if that's <laughs> going to help break the thing and make it a bit easier. Um, if there's information that speaks to you, take it. And for those of you, if there's information that didn't speak to you, toss that because that's just not been for you then. See what feels best to you. We're going to do that. And it's time to get your lives back. Yeah, let's get our lives back. So, so many beautiful um, comments coming in here. I'm just going to pop them up a little bit as we're saying bye. Mm -hmm. And You're welcome. Um, very welcome. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here. You're, it's just a beautiful community. I love being with you all every week. Um, we're going to see you for the Summit Q&A soon, so make sure you've got those dates. If you don't have them, reach out to us. My team will make sure you have all the Q&A dates. And um, we've got some extra Q&As coming up for you guys that are registered for the Summit. So I hope you join us for those. And we will see you um, next Monday at uh, same time, same 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 bat channel. Um, take good care of yourselves. And thank you again, Dr. Teitelbaum. You're welcome. Since I live in Hawaii, I'm going to say aloha. Aloha. <laughs>